Hello and welcome to another episode of the DC Comics News Podcast. Now this week is another special edition. We've got an amazing guest with us tonight, someone I've been a fan of for many years. Um, You'll recognise the name most recently because of Three Jokers and Doomsday Clock, but this man has been working in comics for many, many years and you'll be surprised how many, because I've got a huge bunch of his comics. But enough from me, let's introduce the man of the hour, Colour artist supreme, Mr. Brad Anderson. Welcome. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you very much. That was very nice. It's all facts. Awesome. It's all facts. And it's not yeah. just my voice you'll be hearing speaking to Brad. Of course, we've got our very own Brad, the fashionista, the funk <laughs> my <friend>, Mr. Felipe. <laughs> yeah. Brad, how are yeah. you? Good, good. Nice to meet you. Nice to I meet you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the lady... With the wall of art, Lady yes. Kelly Gaines. How are you? Awesome. Hi, guys. Thanks for being on, Brad. And other thank Brad. You. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Brad. Yes. Brad. That's quite the Brad role Man, of Brad. Brad Stewart, the dynamic <laughs> Bradders. Right, so let's get started. Obviously, Brad, first of all, uh, Mr. Anderson, that is, uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Um, obviously, we've had a chat about what you're finishing right now, but... <laughs> Let's uh, have a chat about you and what you've been up to in recent days before we get the question started. Well, recent days, just been working away, just regular comic book stuff, I guess. I just wrapped up my run on Action Comics uh, with Klaus and John. So uh, we'll see how, I don't know when that's going to even be released, issue 1028. Um, yeah, and I'm working on uh, Batman Earth 1, Volume 3 too um and uh also this geiger stuff too which now i can mention which is pretty awesome um but yeah just regular stuff uh working on you know around the house and that kind of stuff too so nothing crazy but yeah fantastic well let's get on with our questions starting with the other brad our very own brad philly uh, you know, the colorist is kind of the un unsung hero of comic books. You don't hear yeah. from them too much in interviews and things like that. So uh, is there anything that you would like the, our, our listeners to know and comic fans in general to know about, about what the colorist brings to a project and, and how you approach it? um it's yeah it's true like <clears throat> and i'm kind of the i mean first to say that you know colors are often overlooked um you know just recently we just you know dc started giving us royalties and that kind of thing and um but um yeah i don't know it's it, like the, i've always been a comic book art fan so when I get cool art to color, I want to make sure I'm going to do a good job. And I, it's like, to me, it's fun. Like I love doing it. So, um, yeah, I just want to make it look good. I want people to, they're spending their money on it to be like satisfied and go, wow, this is, this is really cool and go through it over and over again. So, but then there's issues with paper printing versus screen and all that kind of stuff, which drives me nuts. Sometimes you get a book. A trade paperback usually um i find that they're printed so saturated and it's way too dark and then i just i i don't even i hate looking at it i don't even like looking at stuff i do so unless i see it online online stuff looks pretty good but i mean that's you ask any colorist and that's going to be one of their pet peeves for sure yeah cool thank you and kelly so just to, to kind of enlighten us more on your process, um, you know, when you receive a book and when you start working on it, at what point in um, at what point in the creative process for a book do you um, do you first see it? Do you first sort of start planning how you're going to color it? Is it the the finished pictures or do you kind of start developing an idea early on? Yeah, well, I usually go through the script first. It's usually scene by scene. A lot of times. Um, like I'm the last guy to get the art. So if the inker's late or the artist is late and then I get it, then by the, you know, then I, then I, I barely have any time to work on it. 
Um, that's pretty rare. It's been pretty good lately. I don't know if has, the COVID has anything to do with it or anything, but the guys I'm working with are really good. So um, I usually have a fair amount of time. So I can schedule. It's Sometimes it's hard juggling deadlines. But yeah, my process, I basically get the script. I might talk to the writer once in a while, depending on the project. Um, if I'm just taking over, like, continuing Action Comics run or something, um, I just jump on, like, the box um, uh, server for DC and the, the, all the reference I need, any questions I talk to. Editors are really good, so I go through the editors. Then I start getting batches of artwork come in. So usually the anchor will send me, you know, like five pages at a time or something. And then um, I just kind of go through there. I'll skim through them. Sometimes I have to clean up the pages, resize them, upload them to the server. And then when I do that, I'm kind of always picturing what I'm going to do per scene, that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of times with comics, there's... Um, like a specific like for instance this um this run in action i can't remember what issue is even out there right now but there's a lot of blue purple energy like pink energy and that kind of thing so that really forces me you know limits to me to what i'm going to do in the background i'm not going to do the same colors as energy or superheroes in the backgrounds that kind of thing so yeah i just keep that stuff in mind superman's got to pop all the time you know, the reds and blues got to look really clean, depending on the scene, right? But usually it's, yeah, you want this, the shield, his S, to look really sharp. So, uh, yeah, just that kind of stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. The covers are a little different. I, I usually like to try a lot of different things on covers. Um, and then I can alter them after if editors or, um, you know, they don't like it or something needs to be changed. But, uh that's where I get to play more, I think, is covers. Nice. Yeah. nice. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. Because that did actually touch on a question I really wanted to ask you. So thank you for that, Kelly. That's led into my question beautifully. Because <laughs> I've spoken to a few artists over the years, and they've said that sometimes um, the characters' comics, they love to colour a Batman because he's black and grey or in some cases just blue it makes it a lot easier to make the backgrounds stand out or whatever else mm -hmm. whereas superman or alan scott for example with a red green and purple costume must make it a much harder deal to color the things around the character would you say that's that's true yeah it is it's just that you want to keep you could go a little more muddy with the backgrounds in those cases um and then have the the costumes and that kind of thing a little cleaner a little brighter the highlights a little sharper and then just dull down the backgrounds a bit but i mean it's just uh yeah it was kind of like that with the doomsday clock it was tough because i remember even on one page in a nine panel grid you have three different locations and each location has to be recognized as soon as the reader looks at it but I wanted to try to bring in some kind of a cast of a yellow light, but I already did that in the other scene that I'm bringing into this page. So it, yeah, that's, that's tough. So you really got to think about it. And plus with all those characters. So my thing was, okay, let's keep the character costumes nice and clean and bright. And then I'll, I can muddy up the backgrounds. I mean, usually there was a lot of explosions and smoke and that kind of stuff anyway. So it makes it pretty easy, but and then you got to try to battle against, well, you want to make sure the characters are in the scene, like fit in the scene. So you don't want them to make like, look like they were just pasted on top. So I bring in a little smoke from the bottom and, and maybe do their, their legs darker and muck, muckier and then still keep some of the bright highlights recognizable as the, the character. But yeah, I mean, you've been doing it long enough. As long as I have, it's pretty, just a standard thing I do, so. And again, yeah. it's stuff that as readers, we probably wouldn't think about in a million years, the things you've literally got to juggle to do your job. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. Brad, your next question. You know, uh, 
a little ways back when we got the first look at um, the cover for Three Jokers 2 on the podcast, we were talking about which cover do you think we're going to pick up? Are we going to pick up all three? And probably for the first time as a comic book fan and reader, my choice of cover had to do with the colors in the cover of the Batgirl photo with the half oh. kind of purple on her face. And I, and I just, I absolutely loved it. And I get that the purple was kind of like a, a tie into the Joker, but what was kind of the inspiration for how you approached that cover and the colors? Because it was just so, it just knocked me out. It was it, it, just incredible. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, uh, Jay and I talk all the time. Like he is, he's unbelievable. Like he is, he wants it put from, you know, from me and we just go back and forth and he's like, oh, I got this idea. I got this idea. And, and then him and Jeff talk nonstop. Um, he's like me and him communicate all the time when it comes to stuff. Uh, if I have any questions, I just shoot him a, a quick email and say, hey, what do you think about this? And it was his idea to do kind of that pink. I don't know if he wanted it uh, like a hotter pink, but I, I kind of dulled it down just to make it like a side purple. And then something that we could keep consistent throughout all the covers. But uh, yeah, those are awesome. But I've had the Batman one on my screensaver on my phone for, oh my God, six months, a year. Maybe I don't even know. I just love the Batman one. Like, I don't know why. It's just the way he did his face and I colored his, you know, a little bit of a shat, five o'clock shadow almost. But it was just my favorite, the Batman one. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah, Kelly? Yeah. Yes, I, I love those covers. Those are fantastic. Um, I, so what would be, what would you say is the most fun you've had working on a project? Is there one that stands out to you as like your all-time favorite or favorite character to have colored? Um, <clears throat> gee, I don't know. I've done, uh, oh, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I don't know if I had a favorite I love working on Gary's stuff like the Earth One stuff and Superman Secret Origins that stuff like um, but DK3 was a lot of fun I liked working on Andy's stuff because it was super open and he just let me do whatever and I kind of I would do stuff and I would send him pages and he's like oh I love that and um, there was a lot of room for me to play with like big open skies, city scenes, and he just left it for me. Um, that I really like that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite. Yeah, I don't know. There's lots. <laughs> like, I, I, I think I've probably worked on almost every character since I've been doing it. It's, yeah. it's got to be 22 <laughs> years now I've been doing it, so. Yeah, Star Wars stuff was a lot of fun. I worked on that for when I first started for years. That was that was pretty cool. I like that, but nothing super particular. I don't think. Yeah, that that's yeah. fair. Honestly, with a with a history as long as yours is, that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and the artists you worked with. Wow. Oh, sorry. I was just trying to look behind your shoulder, Brad. I can see the three jokers collected edition and is that the one volume doomsday clock behind you as well uh yeah it is actually all 12 issues <gasps> must have that book yeah anyway. that's the full uh oh man yeah that's the one that's gorgeous oh yeah, that boy. Is. yeah they did a nice job on them oh it's lovely yeah so they have those the barnes and noble one mm. exclusive one fantastic and then uh, I haven't even opened these. You know what? I'm going to open one right now. For our listeners, we yeah. are getting a sneak peek of books that aren't out until next week. And the fanboy in me is doing a little jig right now. I honestly don't like. <laughs> the these plastic are, these are is being unwrapped. so nice in plastic. I <sighs> hate even. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. So. It, Brad's even got a proper comic book opening knife. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah and you just have that on you? <laughs> That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that have have Christmas list. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I have. I keep it for I, when I go on the back to the garden and stuff. I'll pick dandelions with it and cut the weeds out. And you never know when you need it. 
coyotes might come in and chase you. Because, All right, well. Uh, talking to people on the internet, Brad, uh, guys already asked, you've seen it today. What else does the book have that the three issues don't? So please tell me all the covers are in there. That's that's a question hundreds of oh, people have asked. The, cover oh, the one in 25. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what? I haven't even, like, it's so stiff to open. <laughs> There's nothing like the smell of a new comic. I don't care what anyone says. No. Digital's okay, but a real comic book... It's something we talk about every week on the show, isn't it, guys? Yes, completely. Yeah, this looks really nice. Like the printing on looks beautiful. My copy's on order. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So it's got some variants on the back. If people who want to ask the questions, what does the collected edition include? It does look like it has the covers, the alternate covers, the variant covers, the rare covers, the whole shebang yeah those are good awesome oh, so wow. that, that, that was beautiful up, Brad. Thank to you. This up. so we talked a little bit about your long career and um i got comics collection games back to the 40s but an uninterrupted batman detective legends of the dark knight run going back to 85. So I did first come across your work with your first issue in uh, Legends of the Dark Knight. Was it 106, 108, one of those? And I followed your work through. Uh, you did some work on the War Games crossover. You did some work on Batman Eternal, Batman and Robin Eternal. Um, but when I totally saw your work and thought, this guy's a G, was on your run with Detective Comics with Alvaro Martinez and Raul Fernandez, who'd become a... Yeah. Two good friends of mine on Detective Comics and Justice League Dark. And dude, I have been raving about your work on those books because in yeah. the UK, it was hard to get American comics in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up. We just got the black and white UK reprints. So that's why a colour artist to me is huge deal. So you being on this show today is, is awesome. Um, do you regret not being around for the old Ben Day dots colouring or are you happy to work with the magic toolbox you actually get to work with? Um, yeah, well, I think I remember when I first, uh, I think when I first read some of your comments, I think I was working on Detective and uh, you were saying, oh, you said something like, um, well, we'll see if it holds up or we'll see if the you know if i could keep up the quality and everything else and i thought oh man this guy like what's with this guy so i'm like oh i guess we'll have to show and then i would comment on all your stuff when you posted i'm like and then you're like oh you, he is he's still holding up the same quality and i was like man this guy's killing me here but uh yeah that alvaro like yeah when i first got his he did a whole bunch of double paid spreads in that detective run we did and um yeah, I just loved them. And he had all these open, uh, like all these all these um, panels across. And then he'd have a huge image, but it was all open to the rest of the page. So I'm like, oh, this guy is like, what's he trying to kill me? So I would have to sit and I'd think about and I just I would just add all this kind of texture. But then I couldn't blend in the same color background into this other panels that taking place in the same place. And so I had to really try and... But I remember I did the first couple issues and he was just blown up. He just loved it. He, yeah, he couldn't believe it. So, yeah, I became good, yeah, close with him too. So he actually sent me some original art from Detective and a bunch of prints and everything. Yeah, it signed it for me. And, yeah, yeah, I actually got, I got some pretty nice stuff the guys send me. Like, I got some, Andy sent me a page. Um, him and Joe Hubert signed for me and, um Oh, what else? Whoa. Uh, yeah, some good stuff. Some really nice stuff. Colin Wilson, I did a, some of his stuff in, um, I think it was in a Star Wars. I can't, honestly, I can't remember what issue it was. But uh, he sent me an, a page from that series and signed it for me, which was amazing. Because I mean, Colin Wilson's like a master. Like, he's so wicked, right? Um yeah, I got yeah, some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And then I have Gary Frank sent me a page. She said, what page do you want from Doomsday? And I says, oh, could I get the page where Superman and Dr. Manhattan meet for the first time? So oh, he sent me that page. That's why I have, 
they had that what? original page. Yeah. So they never met in history before, and I had the page where they first meet, and Gary's just a genius, right? So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, so, sorry, I forgot what you were, I kind of went off there. Please don't even, I was just saying that, do, do you miss uh, the fact that you didn't oh, get yeah. to what Steve Oliff and Tatiana Wood and all those colouring legends did with the old Bende Dots colours that you actually work with, state of the art. Actually, not always, because I've also commented on the stuff, because you drive me nuts. Listeners, you have to know that Brad Anderson is an artist, not just a colourist. I don't use the term colourist in my movies, I use colour artist, because some of the work you've done, Brad, <clears throat> with touch markers on people's yeah. sketches is like, yeah, yeah damn! It's yeah, unfair. I got like a like my pile of my markers all there yeah. with the tons of yeah. Well, the thing is, when I first started, I worked at a place called Digital Chameleon, and it was um, a, they digitally separated comics for most of the stuff, most of Marvel stuff, most of DC DC yeah. stuff came out of Winnipeg, and it, they had a it ran twenty four hours, and. Uh, so I went to the Kubert School back in 96-ish. Um, so when I left there, I came back to Canada and I started working at this digital chameleon. And I was blown away. Like everything came out of there. So when I was doing color work there, it was they would photocopy a page. Like I think we were doing Kzar at the time, um, Andy Kubert's Kzar. So they would photocopy the whole issue. And then we would sit with markers and we would color it with markers each page. And then we'd write down the color code, like the CMYK code for the skin tone and what color we wanted on the highlights. And then we would put it on a huge bulletin board and people would just pick off pages and they would digitally separate copying our, that's how comics were done. Most of the comics, X-Men, like all the old X-Men books, they were coming out of, yeah, it was really neat. So I think I did Hulk there. Yeah, Kzar run. We did a whole bunch. Oh, yeah, tons of stuff. Um, yeah, and then but the, just because computers were so slow at the time, we were working on Photoshop 1.3 or something. So you would literally take make a gradation with your color, and you'd have to sit and wait for it to process. And then, oh, it didn't work. And then, okay, you delete it, and you do it again. And then you'd have to wait, and then your computer would crash. It's like, oh. So it would take forever to try to get this stuff done. But um, yeah, so I was doing it just, we had a table full of markers and a room full of like the refill things and we'd fill our markers up. And so I did that for a few years. And then I became like an art director there. And then I worked strictly on the computers once, it, once the computers got a little bit better, then we could do everything on them. Um, I did a bunch of like Kiss Comics and oh, everything, just you name it. Um, yeah, so and I was working on Star Wars stuff there too. And then, yeah, then I ended up working, starting to work on my own. I used to do a bunch of stuff for, um, what was it called? Uh, it was a sports company. They did, they sold memorabilia, like online, like a shopping channel for sports stuff. So I illustrated a whole series of animation cells and all kinds of stuff, like, um, and they would make, make them into animation cells, frame them, and then they would sell them online. So I did. Yeah, I have one up there. I can maybe show you if you want to see. Cool. And we'll describe yeah, it to the okay. listeners as well. Yeah. So I did one for, I don't know if you could see that. It's oh, like a, a banner of characters. Yeah. That's, what's it? The 2002 team, the Team Canada Olympic team, hockey team. Wow. So I, illust I illustrated that for them, and they would make it. So it's similar to that, but I did tons of professional athletes for them. So I did that for uh, almost a year. Did some toy designs for them and bobblehead stuff. And then, because I couldn't work right after I quit that place. So... Um, I did that for about a year, and then I got back into doing comic book work. And I worked with Janju Sema and Star Wars Legacy, and I did all that for a long time. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. <clears throat> well, and then I got to Thank do my 
Action Comics. What? That's the Grant Morrison yeah. one. From New well, that was the New 52 cover, yeah. So me and uh, Regs Morales did Action Comics number one for the New 52. So I did that first series. I thought I thought that was really cool. Like, I did Action Comics number one, right? So, yeah. Yes, folks, that's <clears throat> how much of a geek I am. I recognized <laughs> the picture and the run <laughs> just from Brad. Yeah, and then they, then they did... Uh, yeah, so they did a coin. I don't know if you can see it. Oops. Yeah, so I just wish I could reach through the screen and grab it. <laughs> so the, the Canadian Mint in Canada actually made a coin of that. So the guy uh, sent me one of the coins. Cool. Yeah, it was really neat. And then Jason Fabric and I did a series of coins for, yeah, the Justice League coins. Raz just pulled out this massive banner with the yeah. reproductions of the coins on it. Justice League, Batman, Superman, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Flash, the whole team. So cool. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, Brad. Mr. Felicki, over to you, sir. Uh, you've been in the industry so long. Uh, you know, you've seen the digital technology change so much. Was that a hard adjustment? to make back in the day and you know do you do you prefer the old markers way to the digital coloring that's kind of prevalent these days um i don't know like we did we took a photoshop class back in the cubert school we took a, a class for it <clears throat> um i don't know if i i much prefer working um with photoshop now like it's amazing like and especially when you have deadlines the markers is just too yeah it's it's just different so but for commissions and just for my, my own uh, goofing around i use uh i'll use you know markers and original stuff but even now i still kind of go to the procreate on the ipad and mess around with that too which is kind of fun so yeah but it's um it's way cleaner you know i don't need a huge <laughs> setup i have a huge art table and all my painting stuff and everything in the basement um because just because i don't want it in the office but um yeah it gets pretty pretty messy and that kind of thing but you yeah, know what are you gonna do the technology now is incredible like my daughter is a pro at procreate on the ipad it's pretty it's pretty cool so i like messing around with that too yeah Cool, thank you. Cool, thank you. And Maybe Kelly, we'll see her work in a comic one day. Yeah, she's That'd pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So, I mean, you've been working in comics for ever and worked on basically every character. But uh, what's a book or a character that you would say first piqued your interest in comics or first got you, you know, <laughs> it, I guess as a kid interested in um, in eventually working in the field? Uh, it was Conan. Yeah. Conan and the Hulk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, John Buscema's Conan when I was younger. Um, my brother had the oversized Conan books, and I looked through them, and I was like, I learned how to draw feet and muscles from reading those uh, Buscema books. Yeah. And then I got into, like, I lived in a small town, little lake town, you know, paper mill town. Um, so, we didn't have, there was no comic book shop or anything. So we, I would have to go to the drugstore and go and look at the spinner rack and I would kind of grab whatever I could. Um, but I would just go for the nicest covers because I couldn't, there's no way you can keep up to a series. I never really read, like I would read single issues, but I could never get into like a series. I still don't now, like I can't keep up. Um, yeah, so I did that. And my older brother, I remember seeing some like heavy metal, mag heavy metal magazines and like, Oh my God, the artwork was, it blew me away. Like, but I thought it was, I thought it was just, it was always a dream of mine to, but I was always, you know, I would always draw and do stuff for, you know, friends and just for fun. <clears throat> um, I never thought it was a, a reality, like you get to make a living working in comics. Like, so I don't know. But, uh, I worked at the paper mill right after high school for a few years. And then I heard about the Joe Kubert school. 
So I, I quit and I packed up my truck and I drove to New Jersey and I lived there for a few years. Yeah. So my roommates, uh, I lived with, I was a housemate with Damien Scott, um, my oh, first year. Cool. And then, uh, so he became a good buddy and, oh, who else? Um, Jesse Adolferdang was inking, was inking X-Men at the time. He was inking Andy's X-Men run. So he was moving, he was kind of, he was in his third year and I was in my first year. And then he started working right out of his third year, inking X-Men. So I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. And he was such a cool dude. <laughs> he was in between, I think he was moving his apartment. So he had a, like a, a little space in between his, uh, his move-in date. So he lived with me and my other two roommates. So he's in our living room with the drawing table inking X-Men. And we're just sitting there looking at him like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. So that was really, that was really cool. And then my one roommate, he's a Norwegian guy. He's a filmmaker in Norway. Um, he's done a bunch of movies and he sends me all the posters. I still talk to him all the time. And uh, we had one, another buddy of mine. He's, he was from Alberta, no, from Saskatchewan. Uh, another in Canada, and he's a director for American Dad, and he worked on The Simpsons and that kind of stuff too. Yeah, a lot of guys went to do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, that yeah, was neat. Oh, that's funny. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. But I mean, I remember when uh, Fats from Sarajevo came out that Joe did, and I was waiting to get it, and I was like, oh man, I can't wait. So I got my copy and I went in, I made an appointment with, with Joe to go talk to him. And so I go in his office and he's got this one wall, just a giant drawing table and it's like lights and he's, he, he uh, tapes all these little cardboard boxes on his table for pen nibs and all kinds of stuff. And, and then he's got a massive, like a um, boardroom kind of meeting table, really nice. So we sat there and we bullshitted about comics for hours and he just, like, I just get chills now thinking about it. It was so inspiring. I was just like, man, this guy, like, yeah, he was really good. He was awesome. He could just make you, like, when you leave that room, you're, like, you're walking on, like, you feel like you're a pro and you're just a student. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, oh, good guys. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, thank you. That is, yeah, that fun. is a fun roster of, of even just people to meet going into the industry. That's amazing. Thank you. Good guys. Like. I remember this one guy, I can't remember, he came in my second year. I'll never forget it. We were sitting in class, and I can't remember, his name was Jan. Uh, it's from Denmark or something like that. Young guy. Dursema? Is it Jan Dursema? No, 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 Jan, uh, J-A-N, I think it was his name. But anyway, I can't remember. I honestly, um, I think... Yeah, it was the second year. So he was, he sat in the front of the class and he was sitting on the back of his stool or back of his chair with his feet on where you sit. And he was just doodling on this board and he, he was just drawing in ink with this woman carrying a baby through the snow and this blizzard, but he just drew it down the page just like as the instructor was talking. And I just looked at him like, oh my God, like, what are you doing here? How come you're not? Like, he was so good. And I think <laughs> a month later, uh, Lego picked him up and he was doing Lego boxes or something. He was drawing Lego boxes in LA or something. Like he didn't last. He, I think he went to school for maybe a month and he was already gone, but he was so good. Like crazy good. Yeah. But yeah, it's a That's neat awesome. place and you could go into animation. You can go into like all these specific things. We took, you know, inking classes for, for hours, like days and days. You'd just be inking with your brushes and, yeah, you learn from some good pros. Yeah, I think who was uh, oh, I can't remember. Oh, anyway, he was <laughs> inking Swamp Thing at the time, and he was instructor instructing us. So that's yeah. cool. Well, Kala, Rick Veach. Oh, I, I became a good buddy. I used to go golfing with him too back in. Ah, I can't remember. It'll come back John, to me, sorry. John Tolbin's the inker that always blows my mind from Swamp Thing. I look at his stuff and I just die. He's amazing. He went to the Kubler School and Steve Bissett, Steve Bissett as well went to the Kubler School. Yeah, anyway. so, yeah same with uh, Rags Morales too. Yes. 
when you got to work together, I was so I would talk to him about that kind of thing, and yeah, it's neat. Well, yeah. over the months you and I have been talking, obviously you, you've worked with some of the best artists working in comics today. But can you remember ever receiving a page of finished artwork where you said? damn, I can't wait to colour this. And on the opposite spectrum, damn, I'm going to have a nightmare colour in this. Can you give us a couple of examples? Yeah, I was, um, I was just going through some of the, my old archive stuff too. And um, yeah, it was so detailed, but it was so well drawn. Um, I couldn't wait. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Like the muscles and the lighting and everything. But it was just... When you get the black and white, it looked like a Where's Waldo kind of thing. It was so much city, all kinds of stuff. So, so you would have hated coloring any of Jeff Darrow's stuff then. That probably would have completely blown your mind because his art. Uh, there's so much going on on those pages. I don't know how anybody oh, could. Color. Yeah, there's a few of them though. There was a couple. I don't mind if they're. Like even for when when we did the um, like all oh, this dark side war stuff, so I got these in big books. So wow. actually, yeah. So Jay, this. I got Jay to sign for me too. I signed a bunch for me, cool. but I can actually show you some in here. Towards the end, when it got like the big battle scenes, oh man, and this almost killed us. This whole series. The deadlines were so tight. And that's where the three Jokers first got mentioned as well in that run, wasn't it? Yeah. Way back then, five, six yeah. years ago. Yeah. I want to I try to find, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, but it was good. Like, whenever I work on Jay stuff, he's a, a lovely guy, too. He's really cool super guy, cool too. with. That, you know, making stuff look like a movie with the lighting and very yeah, like some of that. Like, Definitely, but that's so cool. It just Amazing. seems you get these giant pages. I just love that. I can add a bunch of different light, play off the secondary lights and that kind of thing. Yeah, some of it's pretty daunting when you first look at it and you think, "How am I going to do this?" And the next thing you know, four hours is gone, and you're like, "Oh, where'd the time go?" <laughs> Because I will say that back when I first started writing reviews, um, we were told to only mention the line art and the writing. And it's thanks to people like you and Alvaro Martinez who said that you made him look good. Your oh. colours are what made his art look good. So that's why I pride myself on not just talking about the writing and the line art but the colors and the letters too I, I i like to talk about comic would not be anything we could read without letterer and without your work everything would be a black and white comic like i grew up with so we have yeah. to sing your praises thank you you're all part of the team yeah. the book is what you all make it yeah no thank you that's i didn't know we said that so that's pretty awesome after so that alvaro awesome. said that he told me yeah. that you made him look good. Yeah, like for instance, I don't know if you could see, like, so let's say this panel here where you're looking down the alleyway. Um, so when it's, or even like these guys, you know, you get, when you see that in black and white, you think, oh man, like, <laughs> you know, and Jay draws like every belt buckle and every button and that kind of and thing. Gary. So it's like, well, yeah, not so much Gary though, because uh, Gary's doing it on paper all the time. Where wow. if Jay's drawing on a Cintiq, then he can kind of zoom in and he'll draw like every button and zipper and then zoom out. And then I have to go in and, and uh, add the color to them, right? But um, so in those cases, I really have to kind of squint my eyes and, and just think of that big crowd as one giant chunk and then pick away at the highlights, right? And then, you know, maybe do a warm side and then like a cool under light and then separate it from the back. Because if you start going in and rendering all these guys and think, oh, all these guys have to be colored. Well, you're going to drive yourself nuts. You, you're going to miss your deadline. It's not going to look as good because it's just going to be too busy. Um, so you just got to really keep that in mind. Like it's a business and you have 
like I try to set this, you know, an eight to four schedule for me, Monday to Friday kind of thing. So, and then weekends I'll do covers if I have extra covers or commissions and that kind of thing. So otherwise it'll feel like you're working all the time and then you burn out, which is no good. So yeah. we do not want that to happen to you. Uh, uh-uh, no way. Not you. No, oh, I think it's too late for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know exactly how long when I look at a page, I know exactly how long it's going to take. So, which is nice as far as a career goes, you know? Yeah. Covers are always take way longer because you spend a lot of, a lot more time on them. But, uh, and then once I get a scene, um, set up color wise, the first page always takes twice as long. And then I can, and then that's when I go through the pages to go through the script and say, okay, well, if I do this, is it going to, is going to, Bite me in the bite me in the butt later on, so I just keep that in mind. But yeah, yeah, it's a process. But fantastic, yeah. thank you, Brad. Oh, yeah. Your next question: Is there any artist or writer that you haven't had a chance to work with that you would like to work with? I've never colored anything of Jim Lee's before. So, but I think I might be doing some stuff coming up, but nothing for charity stuff kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I would love to tackle some of Jim Lee stuff. It'd be pretty cool, you know, just kind of my take on it, you know, it'd be kind of neat. And I've never done it. So, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I've been really fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you I remember been. being... I remember in, um, I'm a huge Lee Weeks fan. Like, he's my favorite ever since I was in the Kubert school, right? And he was working on, I think, Alien versus Predator um, back in 97, 96, 97, around there. So I think Andy Kubert, I happened to be in his studio in the basement and I saw he had photocopies of the entire issue. And uh, no, this I think it was the whole series, a stack of pages. So I'm like, uh, okay, do you mind if I copy this? So I photocopied them all, and I have the full size 11 by 17 copies of that whole. I'd still in a box in my basement, and I remember looking at them as a student, just thinking, how do you get this good? Like, just the way it's like you're looking through the page, and it's taking you on a journey right to the last panel. Like it's just gorgeous. The guy is unbelievable. So when I got to work with him. Um, I don't know if it was on the Lois, was it Lois and Clark? Um, no, I think I did a cover for him first and he loved it. So we got to talk, uh, just through emails and that kind of thing. And then I ended up working on, uh, I think it was the Lois and Clark run. It was the first one we did. And, um, yeah, he loved it. So we became good buddies. And to me, that's just blew me away so we are at conventions and we'll hang out and just talk and have lunch together or dinner or whatever and yeah he's such a good guy like just a genius yeah yeah so no i've been pretty fortunate gary frank stuff like andy i've worked on some of adam kubert stuff too um yeah there isn't really anyone that uh i just find it funny that i've never done anything of, of jim lee's before so which I would love to because he's wicked, right? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, another treat was that, like I said, that Colin Wilson, and he was when I got to work on his Star Wars stuff. Oh, like I, it was so much fun. You don't, even, and they were paying me for it to do it. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, I loved it. True, yeah, so good. Yeah, I love the art. I love, I love that guys can actually do that. You know, like Alex Ross. Like I'm just kind of going through some of the old. Uh, Kingdom Come stuff, and I remember waiting when it first came out. I would wait all my next week when you, you have to wait to buy the buy the whole series. And I, I had no money; I could barely, you know, it was I was a struggling student, and I was still like have to have these. So I have the original, uh, yeah, like when it first came out. And I look through it again now; it's, it's so amazing, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, lots of stuff. But awesome. So you have a, a pretty extensive collection of, of artwork and comic books 
Do, would you say you have a piece that stands out as your absolute favorite piece or or the thing you're the most proud to show off? <clears throat> um, I do. Yeah, I got a, I got a few cool things. Um, did that before the Watchmen, the Night Owl one, and they had the the poster that came with it. So Joe and Andy signed it for me and sent it to me, and uh, that was the only one that Joe ever signed. And it's right before like he passed away too. Yeah, so that was, that one's kind of cool. But I got a. I, I could probably. I could probably. If you just give me a second, I could maybe show you. Yeah, that's a page. Oh wow! Yeah, sweet. Eh? Oh man, oh, that's awesome. That's a Gary Frank original. Yeah. Oh yeah, a couple of those. From. Yeah, it's an Andy Kubert page. Fantastic. They look so much better full size. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then that's why they're the first editions. The night, the night owl page. There's Archie. Oh. Yeah. And Dan Dryberg. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Thanks, Brad. Oh yeah. There's another. Oh. oh yeah, no problem. Like, I love it. Like I, you know, growing up as a comic book artist. Um comic book art fan um yeah and, and to you know i was i would i would read frank miller's stuff yeah and then now you know i'm in i'm in new york in an uber with frank miller after a signing and <laughs> yeah so they did this one wow so i did that cover oh that's amazing and then they all signed it that's yeah just this is after our dk3 run but, uh, yeah, this is printed on like a heavy um, watercolor paper. I love this. is probably my favorite. Because I remember getting this black and white. So Andy drew it and then Frank inked it. So the the way Frank's like, or uh, yeah, Frank's like, oh, how am I going to handle this stuff? So he just started scratching it and like, you know, spattering um white on it and he just went crazy and then i get it and i'm like oh my god you know how am i supposed to color this like you know lines aren't connecting it's just a, it's you know it looked like, like not a mess but it was just there was no you know i couldn't pick out like batman's belt or do anything so i just did it all red i just went whatever and i showed it to them and they loved it like they just freaked her like this is perfect exactly it's different than doing all blue but I thought, oh, okay. And then I just painted in some, you know, lightning and some of the rain, that kind of stuff, just added to what he already did and just try to separate um, uh, Batman's form, just give him a little bit of shape. Yeah. And it became one of my favorite covers of all time. And then they actually sent, and I have a t shirt of it too, which is awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I just nice. geek out when, like, when they send me that stuff, I was floored because I thought, this is so wicked. Like, yeah. Well, that so whole, I got all this stuff. I, that I whole thing now, Matt Reeves has stolen it, so you should sue. You should be on commission for all of Matt Reeves' um, designs <laughs> on the back of the movie because it's all the red. He stole that from your DK3 poster. So there you, you go. You know what? I think, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I doubt it. Oh, yeah. but, you know, we can say it. <laughs> yeah. So looking back, you've worked with some of the greats, including Frank Miller. But can mm. you remember the moment where you picked up a comic book and thought yeah this is what i want to do C can you give us that first comic book memory when you thought yeah well i was there's tons but um i remember reading man without fear when i first picked it up and it is one of my favorite books of all time because when you're finished sure. reading it, it's like you you think it, you, you it, it's like you just watched a movie like the next day you'll think oh yeah I'm, I, you know that was a cool movie I just, and then you think oh no that was um and you don't even see daredevil till the lot till the last page right like you don't he's not but it's so well done the narrative art was so well done i thought okay this 
this is how it's done. Like, yeah. Yeah, I love that book. It's one of my favorites. So, yeah. And then I got to see when um, Sin City came out. Well, that was, that was a game changer. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Fantastic. I don't know if you ever read like these Stan Drake uh, books, Kelly Green. It's it's old, old. Um, but I remember looking at this guy's stuff when I was in school, and it is unbelievable. Like, if you ever get a chance, check it out. Just the artwork alone, the way he draws that women. That looks like early 70s, am I right, by the style? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, the look of gorgeous. That. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that stuff. Look at that last panel. Amazing. So good. Yeah. Anyway, I recommend you checking that out. I will. <clears throat> You've worked with a lot of different franchises Marvel, DC, Star Wars, the list goes on. Uh, and I always like to ask this when people have worked on a lot of these franchises. Is there one uh, franchise that you haven't worked on that you would uh, really like to take a crack at? Uh, image? I've never done any image stuff. Oh, yeah. but you're about to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nothing. And whoever wants to, whoever, you know, wants to hire me. Um, I'm down with whatever, yeah. Pretty easy going. <clears throat> but I, I just recently got to do some Spawn stuff, which is kind of cool. I've always wanted to do that. So that was neat. So I talked to Todd on the phone probably 40 minutes. We just chatted about stuff. And um, yeah, and then he sent me these two covers. So I did those kind of over the weekend um, just because I was so busy with my regular stuff. So we'll see. I might end up doing more. I just, my schedule is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty pretty hectic. So, yeah, and this Earth One Volume Three is massive. So I'm gonna I'll be working on that for the next year probably. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, it's huge. But uh, yeah, no, nothing. Dark. I used to work with Dark Horse when I first started doing all the Dark Horse and Marvel and DC. When I first started, I was doing all three of them at once. Um, so, um, is there, is there any story that you've ever read or, or storyline that you've come across that you think, oh, I would really love to, to have the chance to give my take on that? Is there anything that, um, you know, if we're spanning the entirety of comics history, is there anything that you, you know, wish retroactively, like, ah, I, I could have done something really amazing with that? Um, not really, like, you would think. Watchmen or the killing joke right which yeah. i kind of did so it's like well <laughs> true yeah well those are the ones that i used to read and just be like oh man like i don't know i just because i look at it as a colorist so i thought oh if i could if i could redo the Watchmen, you know but i mean it's just it's it's pretty dated and some of it's pretty garish and there's it's like there's no some panels um there's like no color theory to it you know it's just like you know the sunset's bright yellow and then the you know the car in the foreground is like the same exact yellow it's just really yeah i don't know but uh yeah i look at a bunch of different colors too um calling like i'm um what am i looking at now i got um Uh, yeah, like some of the Batman, um, White Knight stuff. And, uh, what else is there? Yeah, Batman, White Knight. Um, Matt Hollings. Elizabeth, yeah. Elizabeth Brightweiser stuff is just blows me away. Like, she's so good. Totally different than my, what I do. Um, yeah, Dave McCaig, I love his palette. It's just... You know, everything that's totally different than what I do. Um, yeah. And then I have that, uh, not Tokyo Ghost. Um, 
Yeah, Tokyo Ghost stuff. I look at. I'm kind of reading some of that stuff right now too. This stuff I kind of have sitting beside me because I'll usually go buy single issues or just single books. I won't go through a whole series. Trades usually and that kind of thing, but yeah. And anything usually that Tom King and and Mitch guys do, like yeah, this stuff's awesome. They're always really good. Yeah, Mitch is the best. Like he's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, you said the words image comics, and mm -hmm. we now know that you will be working with Gary Frank and Jeff Johns again on the upcoming Geiger, which is a creator-owned series for Image. Now, I saw this and it blew my mind. Can you tell us anything when you're getting started, when the first issue's out? Um, this just looks awesome. I think I think I read it was April 2021, the first issue. Um, I have two full issues um, here. Uh, and then Gary's working on the third one. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, that's about all I can say. I don't really know. I don't know what's been released. I haven't even read any. Uh, I haven't read anything. I just saw it on my my Twitter feed that it was announced. So I'm like, oh, perfect. But uh, you could yeah, it's a better way to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped for you guys to see this stuff. Gary's artwork is crazy. Like, it looks really good. Nice. So. nice. How long would you say, on average, it takes you to color a cover? Uh, I'd say four hours average, depending on the cover. Yeah. I usually start, like if I have a cover due the next day, I'll start early, you know, maybe six in the morning or something and just kind of plug away at it. And then, yeah, it'll be wrapped up by, you know, I'll be done by noon-ish, depending on the cover, you know. Uh, some go a lot faster, but it all depends, right? So I was flying through some of those three Jokers ones by the end because I think I had about 15 of them under my belt already so i just i kind of knew exactly what colors and you know my what i would tackle first and the hair and everything else so i was getting pretty good at them at the end um yeah and even pages i'll try to get three three to four pages well usually three per day to try to do um and then yeah the deadline stuff i remember at the end I think I was doing maybe five pages at the end of Doomsday Clock. Just I had to. I'd get up at 5.30 and then I'd work a full day till six, six at night or something like that. Just to have them done. Yeah. But you have to do it, right? So, cause, and plus I wanted the same consistency throughout as I know. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to let some of the uh, critics down, eh? So you got to make sure. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'll never forget that. Yeah. yeah, that was with the Justice League dark stuff. That was fun. The first few issues, I was like, this is going to be great. Oh, Get to do some really awesome. dark magic. And he was drawing his mind. Like, he was out of his mind drawing it. And uh, I, thought we, I thought we put out some really nice stuff there. So, yeah. Well, my two colleagues on this show and one other who couldn't make it tonight, I bashed them around the head so hard with Justice League Dark that they yeah. are now fans yeah. and own the trades. So, yes. thank you. <laughs> one Beautiful. of the most great books on the market. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the, the fir the, all that whole first few issues, it was like, this is going to be amazing. Like, it looked so cool. Like, some of those big double-page spreads, like, I think I posted a bunch of stuff. I just picked, I was archiving a bunch of my files and I picked out some from Detective too, Detective and Justice League Dark. And I posted some, these are my, some of the, the double paid spreads that Avril would put out. And uh, yeah, they came out really nice. 
yeah, I'm pretty proud of that stuff. That was good stuff. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Kelly? Um, so what is a piece of advice you would give to, um, you know, a young artist or a young color artist who's looking to start out in, um, in comics? I would say don't just rely on um, the technology. Like mess around with watercolor and acrylics and um, do something that doesn't have a you know, command Z attached to it, you know, or you can undo your mistakes. Uh, that's pretty, yeah. Like grab a bunch of markers and photocopy some of your favorite images and just do them like that. And then, um, it really forces you to commit to your decisions. You know, I think that's huge. And also you got to keep in mind, it's a commercial art. So don't be married to some of your stuff. Like there's times where I'm like, Oh, I love this cover. I think I did a Wonder Woman cover and uh, I had her all lit by fire and it was like, oh, this is so, I just loved it. And then I sent it in. They're like, no, uh, yeah, her hair looks brown. She has to have like dark blue hair. And I'm like, oh, so I had to change the entire thing and it just kind of it lost the feel to me. But I understand, like, I, I wasn't upset that, I mean, that's the way it is. Like, it's their it's their character and it's not. And usually the editors are really awesome. Um, they're really nice when it comes down to changes. But um, yeah, don't get, and accept any critiques that people give you. Don't just, yeah, don't take it personally. Like the more info you get on how to become better, the better. So yeah, mm -hmm. just go with the flow, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Steve? We have to um, talk about Three Jokers because what I loved about your work on this series was the way that you somehow managed to marry the psychedelic style of John Higgins' colours on the original Killing Joke and Brian Bolland's much more subtle, almost pastel shades <clears throat> on his version. Because the three issues, I, I pulled out my original Higgins uh, Killing Joke and all four books could make one story. The way you've done it, it works perfectly. Did you consciously look at both versions to decide in your color palette or was it just, no, let's look at Jason's work and go with that? Because it, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. There is a lot of discussion with the guys, Gary and, and Jay are awesome to work with. So um, for Doomsday, it was, it was easier because, you know, before the Watchmen entered the DC universe, they want, you know, wanted a certain look, right? And then it changed once they got into Gotham kind of thing, let's say. Um, but that first, I think the first scene with Rorschach, I, col I colored it three times. I did that six pages. It was, I think it might have been six pages. Or the or th three of the pages I redid three times. Because it just it wasn't right. The first time I did it, it looked really cool, but it wasn't like it wasn't the watchman kind of look. But I wasn't sure how far to push it. I was super nervous because it was the first Doomsday Clock one and I knew how big of a deal it was. Um so I would I would do a couple pages, I would send it to Gary and Jeff. And then Gary would be like, well, why don't we try this, do a little more of this. So then I would redo it. And then I, I think, I don't even think I sent him the second one. Then the third one I did, I sent it to him. They're like, hey, this is perfect. Um, and Jay's like that too. He's really good. With the three Joker stuff, there's, there's, there's a, the locations are super bright. Um, well, 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 with the pool scene, and then the aquarium scene, like it's pretty specific. So I got to go a little bit darker, more movie-esque to it. And when they're walking in the hallways and that, I would just, I bring some light in from, you know, like a street light outside or, you know, when uh, Batgirl kicks the door in, it's all kind of red, um, raining, just to play off her colors. 
Um, I really didn't want to go blue. I had to stay away from the greens and I had to stay away from the blues. So, you know, what's your option, right? So I kind of played with the different red tones. Um, yeah, so I'll just kind of think of it like that. But I, I like that page where she kicked the door and Jay drew it perfect. Get, he left me a nice side light. So with the lightning, um, yeah, it came out good. But it's, yeah, I, I try not to, you know, Jay wasn't drawing it to look like the killing joke either. So I wasn't about to try to like change my approach to Jay's artwork to try to match something that, you know, it's, it would look really weird to me. Um, I wasn't going to try to reinvent myself. So I just kind of went with what I normally do. I think it worked out pretty good. So plus, I, you know, plus you have deadlines too, right? So I can't start <laughs> trying different things and then blowing deadlines and then redoing it because it looks different and yeah i don't know but even the the scene with, with joe chill where he's on the handicam uh he just sent me the art and jeff and jay's like yeah he's gonna be holding handicam i says okay i think i have an idea so i just i had like four different layers of textures that i would paint into to get that look of the handicam stuff um you know i added some noise i put some scratch filter stuff um uh, it came up way better than I thought it would like I wasn't sure it was going to print as nice but it came out exactly the way I wanted it and they loved it perfect so it came out nice yeah so thank you no Mr. Feliki. do you listen to music while you work and if so what is your favorite go-to music to listen to uh I like heavy heavier stuff um I figured <laughs> uh yeah a lot of anything heavy some good riffs keeps me speeded up but i listen to a lot of podcasts and uh books on tape kind of thing i'll download some books audio books stuff like that so yeah I, I just read or i just did i just listened to a prayer before dawn um uh that billy what's his last name now just listen to it like two days ago but I just went through that book where he's in prison in a Taiwan prison. It's crazy. Like true story about the guy. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty much all over the map when it comes to that kind of stuff. I like Joe Rogan stuff. I listen to some of his a lot of his podcasts. He gets in depth with a lot of the science guys. I just love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dan Carlin's cool. history podcast. I go through all that stuff. I just love it. Nice. Yeah. nice. And it carry it gets me through hours and hours of sitting at the computer too. So, yeah, yeah. Um. So, we we talked a little bit before we started recording about just uh, you know the the changes. We can't we don't have conventions right now. Um. You know, and it's not necessarily the hardest thing in the world for all occupations to work from home. Um, mm. But what would you say? Is there anything that you've extremely benefited from? Um. Just being home during a lockdown and doing this kind of work? And what would you say you miss the most about face-to-face uh, -face fan interactions? Oh, man, yeah. It's the conventions. Conventions suck, like, that they're not <laughs> not around. Because, I, I like, I usually try to go to the San Diego one every year, and I use it as a break. So I'll bring, you know, my wife and kids will come, and we'll spend a week down there and hit the beach and stuff. And... But conventions, like I've worked with guys and editors for years, and I've, you know, never met, you know, this is a while ago, I've never met them face to face, right? So conventions are a really good time to go and kind of hang out with them. And, you know, you go to some parties or, or dinner with some guys and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I miss that. That's That sucks. But uh, New York, the last New York convention I was at there, 20 well 2019 one um yeah i got to chat with the tons of fans you know got a lot of commission work guys are still getting a hold of me for commission stuff through that one convention got everyone was so nice it was super cool um yeah i miss that stuff it's it's a nice little break but yeah it's too bad and there's a lot of guys yeah. that are suffering just from not con no conventions right like it's brutal yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's, I guess that's with every, everything right now. But. Well, that's hopefully, maybe not next year, but the year after, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But I thought once my oh. kids get older, I have a 14-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old son. And um, so whenever we would go to conventions, I always bring them. It's like a big treat for them to come. And um, But now that when they, you know, once they're getting to be older, then, you know, my wife and I can kind of use it as a, you know, excuse to go to a trip or go to Spain or something like that. I could, you know, or the UK. I don't even, I don't know. Like, we'll see if I ever get invited out there. We'll see. I'll be waiting. I'll be <laughs> waiting. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've never, like, me and Gary, I've been working with Gary Frank for years. Like, whatever. 50, well, 10, 12 years now, I guess. More than that. And I've never met him. We've never met face-to-face. I yeah. met him last year. How can you not have met him? Well, you just see that that's the way it is. Like I'm in Canada and he's there and you just never for him to come to a convention, he's gotta take, you know, seven yeah. days at least, right? The travel and so yeah. But yeah, but the New York con was really good. So Andy and Kubert and I and his wife and my wife, we got to hang out for a bit, go for dinners and that kind of things. It was and it was super casual, like you just, you know, uh, kind of talk shop a bit, but you just, it's it's a different, more casual level. So it's nice. Yeah. I have to um, talk about sometimes when you see a movie and it's beautifully directed, really well lit, and the director of photography is on drugs and there's scenes that just look fantastic that are completely unnecessary. And I had to comment on the short story you contributed with Alvaro and Raul for Detective 1000, where mm-hmm. there's two panels and there's a portrait of Thomas and Martha Wayne. And dude, you got like an oil color effect and brush strokes on this painting. And A, what possessed you? And B, thank you. When you do stuff like that, is it just totally random or is it something you thought, well, let's see who notices? No, I do it just, um, actually, there's one big one in this new, in the Geiger number one, there's a huge painting that I did the same kind of technique on it. I'll paint it normally. Well, I just want that different. I don't want it to be black and white, like black ink. So I want to have a, have it be a color hold anyway. Um, But then I just, I think of it as a painting. So I'll just kind of paint it by hand and then I'll kind of, tweak it a bit, um, emphasize the brush strokes, and then I just, I'll put a filter on it and kind of level it out just to see. And it gives it a really cool effect, I think, yeah. I don't know how it comes out in print. I never even saw that in print, actually. But uh, on, when I see it on the computer or online, it looks really good, so. Yeah, it's good. better on the individual issues than it did on the trade. But um, I'll Always say you look good. better in- deluxe than it did on the on the standard print because the deluxe was on that glossy paper but that effect i was talking about it for days and saying guys have you seen this piece of art and um thank you for noticing it on the review as well because you said (laughs) i didn't think anybody would notice that it was just two panels but it was bonkers yeah no i'm glad you noticed that's yeah Yeah. i did thank you well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll I'll wait your comment when you see the Geiger first one too. Um, I'm going to have to put dibs on reviewing that book. Um, yeah. So, everyone else, Kelly, you heard it first. Brad, you heard it first. I'm reviewing that one. Yeah. Or else, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Dibs have been called. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Felicky. Uh, you talked uh, about Geiger and the uh, the Earth One stuff. Uh, is there anything else that you're working on that's coming out in the near future that you can talk about? I can't talk about. It. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, there's shucks. some huge, some really cool, two super cool ones that I'm so pumped for. But <clears throat> yeah, I can't. Uh, I don't even want to say anything about it because it would be it would be bad if I did. Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> Omniverses or a three Joker sequel at all, we're not allowed. Okay, so just don't. 
Yeah, I know. It's, it's nothing that you have, like, it's totally, yeah, it's, yeah, I can't say. Yeah, I already did a couple covers for it a while ago. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I did a wonderful cover for, um, with Gary back in like, I think it was, it was a long time ago, 2019, maybe? no, 2018. And I was happening to be going through my pictures on my phone. Or I have it on there and I'm like, oh, this has never been released. I don't know why. I'm going to have to contact an editor and see if I can post it because it's super cool and no one's ever seen it. Hmm. Huge Wonder Woman fan right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I think I'm going to make a print out of it. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, like she's holding like a Medusa head all cut off and it's pretty sick. Like, oh, that sounds so cool. <laughs> I'd show you. Maybe when this is over, I could show, I'll show you a picture of it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Maybe. <laughs> so cool. Um, oh, so you've talked a little bit about the difference in quality between, say, a trade paperback versus, um, you know, if you if you see a single issue print do you is it more of just you'll buy whatever it is that you're going to buy and then sort of open it and it's like oh it doesn't look as good in this version or do you kind of have a strategy with how to pick up the the best quality art yeah my strategy is flipping through it seeing something <laughs> like um yeah there's times though that i just i love the artist i love the cover but i won't i couldn't buy it just because it, it looked to me, because I'm looking at it, I'm like, why would you? Uh, yeah, so I would just pass. But I got to do those plunge covers with Gary. And I would see they send me reference for doing the cover. So they'd send me some of the artwork for the interiors. And like, I just got my comps for it um, maybe a couple weeks ago. And I haven't even read them. So I'm going to go through and read them like I'm super pumped about them. Like their artwork is like so good and it, like simple, but wicked. Yeah, right. Like I literally just, just put them there. Yeah. So we would kind of discuss doing some of these horror kind of covers. And so I would just paint in. Yeah. These are awesome. Like, come on, look at those things. That creepy. <laughs> that is. Yeah, those house books are brilliant. I love them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with Dave Stewart. He's he's amazing. Stuart Eminem, like. So I want to. I'm going to go through these. Yeah, they look awesome. Great artwork. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot of good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. So, I know the time is getting away from us. So, obviously, if you're cool, one more round of questions, and we'll 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 say thank you and 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 let you proceed with your work, sir. But I do have to ask, and I try to work this in on interviews where it's someone I'm, I'm a really a big fan of. That people are frequently probably deluging with you with questions about comics about who's your hero, this, that, and the other. And you've probably been asked every question in the world over the years, but is there something you wish someone had asked you in the past but never did or never got around to? Or is there anything you'd like to tell our listeners, your fans, comics fans in particular, about your work or about yourself as a person that you think that, that fans would be interested to find out? What's the question you were never asked that you would like to answer? Oh, man. Um, I don't know, actually. That's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I try to keep a balance with work, like, you know, working as freelance, um, it's, it, it, it's tough at the beginning and you want to take on as much as you can and, but then you, you know, like I said, you're working all the time. You're constantly at the computer. You're constantly, you know, a lot of times I'll go to bed and I'll think about 
like I'll literally have the cover painted in my head the, when I, you know, the night before, and then I just get up and do it, um, you know, the next day kind of thing. But um, you really need that balance, I think. Like, you know, if I'm working X amount of hours, I like to be outside for X amount or working in the garage or that kind of thing or do something, right? Um, I think that's really important. Like guys will, you need a wind down time or just to step away from the, the drawing board or the computer. Um, so I like doing that. I like working, you know, change the oil in my truck and just build something, that kind of thing. So whatever, yeah. I work in the garden, a lot of time outside. Like I cut a lot of grass, but I find it relaxing. So I'll put some tunes on and I'll cut the grass for a couple hours and yeah, you know, then I'm ready to go again. But there's times where you're working. I remember the one during Doomsday Clock, it was brutal because Doomsday Clock was oversized issues. And then I had, um, I was working on two other series at the time, uh, Justice League Dark and action comics and that might have been something else in there too so i remember there must have been god it must have been i think in the in a six month span i had one day off i took one day i would work right through saturday sunday full days covers everything else and then as the deadline came close to the end of a doomsday clock book well, then you're doing the back matter stuff. Then you're getting everything buttoned up. And um, even at the end of Three Jokers, it was 1.30 in the morning and we're still finishing up some some tweaks on it and getting some corrections in. So, yeah, so you really need that time to kind of step away. So, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing for me. I mean, you do anything too much, you're going to need a break from it. So otherwise, you'll... Like, I, I do not want to grow to hate. I don't want comics to become another job. Like, oh, I got to go to work, paint Gary Frank's wicked, wicked artwork. Like, I don't want to hate it. So, not that I would, so but you know, you know what I mean, though? Like, I don't want it to become, you know, just a job that I'm just, oh, I got to go and do this. But and why I always want to love it, because you love it, it's going to show in what you're doing. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you got to keep consistent, you know, like, like you said, right, with uh, Justice League Dark. <laughs> well, I, I just don't know how you do it. And I, hopefully I wasn't being an evil swine and torturing you. I was just saying, no. oh, this guy's incredible. How does he do it? <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. I didn't take it like that. I just thought it was funny. You're like, oh, I just love it. I just hope he can uh, keep this consistency up. And I was like, what? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you more than did. You blew me away, and you still do. So thank you. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I hope more people read that Justice League stuff. It was, like, I loved it. The artwork in it, some of the double-page spreads, I would, I would like to make and do, like, a, a print. Like, some of them are really nice. Yeah, it's a cool story. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Felicki, your final question, sir. If you uh, had to show somebody an example of your work that best sums up your style what cover or page would it be i would probably say uh probably i don't know recent ones would be the three jokers ones or the doomsday clock covers um yeah, that's pretty much would be my style. I still throw in like I still use brush like hand brush strokes and then some selections, but even when I work on Gary stuff, I'll make a selection and then I'll paint into it after and then add kind of hand done little highlights and that kind of thing. Just to give it a little more organic. I just try to match the art. Depend depends what kind of the, the artist is doing too. I'll just I'll try to follow the artist's lead. So but yeah, I don't know. Like I worked on uh, Teen Titans stuff, um, Teen Titans Earth One, and it was super, you know, cut film, animation style um, with Terry Dodson when I worked on that stuff. That was really cool. That was a fun one. I'm a huge Terry Dodson fan too. So 
when I got to work on that. Um, so I really changed in order to match his style and what the look he was looking for. Um, yeah, so honestly, I'm not married to one specific style. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just try to add something to the artist's pages. So I'm just a laborer and they hire me to put color in. So I just try to, I just try to do my job, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So going back to Justice League Dark, because like Steve said, he got all of us reading it and I love Justice League Dark. I mean, it is a mind blowing at every turn. Oh. What would you say or who would you say is the most fun character to work on or who what was the most fun character as you were watching this book come to life? Who stood out to you the most? Oh, it was Wonder Woman. Wow. Wonder Woman and Man Bat too is pretty cool. <laughs> like when he was in his his well, the first when you first see him, I just love that page when he walks up the stairs and Wonder Woman's there, and I got the light kind of that kind of a dull because he the way the lighting was, he's coming from the, the the bottom where there was I think warmer light coming up to in where the waterfalls and so when I saw that I'm like oh I'm gonna play up that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a few really cool, really cool effects in there. Um, but Wonder Woman, I, I loved because her armor, I could do like a deep kind of almost like a green gold and then play off the highlights. So even if she's wearing a dark robe and she's in shadows, well, you get the glints off her, you know, off her armor and stuff. I love that. That's one of my favorites. There's some cool, there's some, and I think one of the later issues um remember when all the bodies they got all it was all i think when man bat burst out and he um yeah. was transforming it was all like crazy hands. Yeah. yeah it was Ugh. oh man Gross. like that took, that one image of him took a long time because i had to okay i always try to pick a light source and i'll say this is where my light source is coming on this direction and then i'll put like a harsh light so I had to go through that entire mutated form and pick out every, you know, every part that's going to catch the most highlight. And then I do like a, a cast shot, like a reflective light from the floor. And then you get that super cool 3D look, you know? Yeah, I love that. And it's all fleshy awesome. and gross. And I could put some <laughs> pinks and reds. And I thought that came out really cool. But Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, those books are stunning. I mean, yeah, Alvaro, absolutely hands he, down. He, yeah, he he loved that. For, he was blown away by the first issue. Those guys, Raphael, and yeah, he would send me a message and saying this looks amazing. Um, yeah, it's nice to hear. So, yeah, he's a good guy. They're good guys. They're fun to work with. Like I, I and I really got the feel of what he was looking for as we kind of carried through issues. So it was e getting easier to work on. So. Yeah. And then surprisingly, those pages moved on pretty quick. I got through them pretty quick. So I don't know why. I just loved where they were fun. They were just, I just had, I was super loose. Um, no, like, um, no real pressure, like Three Jokers or Doomsday Clock or DK3. Like I was every page, I'm like, okay, I'm really second guessing some of my decisions. And I was kind of hesitant in some things. But Justice League Dark, I just, did whatever I wanted. It was awesome. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thanks. Second that. <laughs> and again, Kelly's read my mind because it does lead into the final question I wanted to ask you because you do tend to get a lot of repeat work with the same creative teams. Obviously, James Tynan, Alvaro and Raul on Detective Comics and then all of you move Lock, Stock and Barrel onto Justice League Dark. And again, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank on both the Earth One series and on Doomsday Clock 2. Mm. Um, I really do get a sense of family and camaraderie and the, that you guys are really having fun doing this. Um, is that why you tend to, especially in recent years, go back and work with the same creators? Is it because they're your buddies now and it's so much fun? Well, yeah, they just asked me and I'm like, yeah, I'm on board. <laughs> I think maybe they like me because I'm reliable. I don't know. But 
yeah no they're they're awesome like jeff and gary are awesome james is he's a wicked dude like yeah i love working with him so yeah i don't know like i do i don't not out there searching for it or anything but yeah they just like doomsday clock there was no other like they said you're our only choice there's no other option like you're wow. you're coloring it yeah and for like dk3 i think there was six guys trying for the job so i had to do like a test page why well, do i had to do six pages for a test and they actually and i was actually it's funny i was going on a fishing tournament and i think it was like i'm leaving i was leaving on a thursday morning and i wouldn't be back till sunday so monday they said oh can you do these six pages for to test out for this the dk3 and i'm like oh my god this is huge right but i had no time so i just like oh man so i sat there and i was stressing over it i was freaking out and I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have a pretty tight deadline on those on the series if I do get it. Um, so I'm not gonna try to do, like I said before, I'm not gonna try to reinvent myself. I'm gonna need to get pages done on time. And this is so I just did. I just went through them as like I would do if it was if I was working on the series. And they used the actual pages that I did um in the book too and then i just got it right away so now we just cranked through it like crazy yeah uh, yeah it was it was neat Nuts. yeah so i got those in and then i went on this fishing tournament over the weekend and i didn't even know if i got it till i got back on monday yeah it was, it was it was such a weird it was bad timing but yeah it worked out yeah that's amazing well and andy's really good like he's a good friend and he knew I kind of know what he's looking for when I'm working on his stuff. Um, and he's really comfortable with me working on his stuff too. So yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Wow. It's like Brilliant. that detective, was it detective 1027 cover that wraparound one? Yeah. That's, yeah. That I can't remember what number it was. I didn't do anything in that interior. I just did the, the wraparound cover of Andy's on it. So and he and the way he was drawing the cape, it was really hard edge. So I played that up, and I thought it came out really cool. And I had to change the bat. We had an issue with the bat that was breaking through. Um, so I did that a few different times. Um, we were going back and forth on the color of it, and um, yeah, but I love that cover, like this the red city in the back and all that. I thought that came out really cool. Yeah, yeah, but I mean. Honestly, I just, I love doing it and I love getting a chance to work on, you know, this guy, these artists and work on their stuff and yeah, it's good. It's a good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. And listen, all I can do is uh, say, keep up the great work. Can't wait to see Geiger and your secret projects you can't talk about. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, Brad, thank you so much for joining us. Please tell our listeners, tell your fans where they can reach you on social media, where they can see more of your work, how they can catch up with you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm on Twitter and uh, Instagram. I think you can find, I don't even know my, I think Comic Brad on Instagram and then BD Anderson 13 on Twitter. Yeah, my Instagram, I put family stuff and that kind of thing. Twitter is strictly comic book stuff and, and work related stuff. Um, but I put a lot of um, artwork and stuff on my Instagram, so you could check that out too. There's lots on there. But um, yeah, I don't know. That's about it. Just I really appreciate you guys having me on. This has been awesome. Now I got to clean up this mess I made with uh, pulling out all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think next time I'll have it ready. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Felicki, where can the universe find you, my friend? Uh, you can find me writing news and reviews, DC Comics News. You can find me on the Mad Love Harley Quinn podcast, part of the DC Comics News podcast network. And you can follow me on Twitter at FlickyB1. Awesome. Kelly. Um, you can find me doing opinion and editorial pieces for DC Comics News. 
Um, you can also find me on Mad Love the Harley Quinn cast and our main podcast. Um, and you can also find me on um, DCN After Dark, one of our new new YouTube shows. And you can find me on Twitter at Kel Gaines Wright. Outstanding. Awesome. So, Mr. Anderson, again, we thank you. Um, you can catch this show. We'll let you know as soon as it goes live. Um, and every now and then I'm on the Mad Love Show too. But I'm usually on the new show. And every now and then getting to do extra special shows like this with talents like yourself. So thank you so much for joining us. You know where you can find me, Brad. <laughs> Always stalking you on yeah. Twitter at Stevo E-L underscore S-T-E-E-V-O. And that's never going to stop as long as you keep producing the work you produce. So thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, guys. I really thank appreciate you so it. so much. Very nice to meet you guys. You yeah. as well. Yes, thank you very much. We'll catch up again when Geiger's released. I think we have to talk about that when that book comes yeah, out. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, just shoot me a text and we'll figure it out. Yeah, there's going to be lots to talk about coming up, so I'm looking forward to it. Brilliant. Awesome. And in the meantime, Brad, Kelly, what do our listeners really need to do? Read. More. Comics. Yes. <laughs> Brad Anderson, thank you. It's been a joy. Look after yourself and okay. keep up the great work because you can't lose that consistency. You just no. can't do it. <laughs> I'll let you down. I'll let you down. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Brad, you. and Thank we'll you. see you all on another show. Take care. All right. Awesome. Talk soon. Bye. <laughs>